All right. Well, now that tarpon season's kind of winding down, we're going to start tying some snook flies, but especially for the beach. This is the time of year where I enjoy chasing snook on the beach, side casting. So, start off with a uh, Mustad 9175 UPBLN hook. It's a short shank, wide gap. Two odd is what I normally tie with. However, you can use an SC15 uh, Gamagatsu as well on a two odd. But I'm going to start off with some llama hair. You can use Icelandic uh, sheep if you want. You can use fin raccoon. But the thing about this llama is it just has a perfect texture and profile that I really like. Just going to attach that. We want to tie everything as far back on the hook as possible. Uh, you'll see why. We don't have a lot of hook shank to work with to begin with. So basically we got the tail, which is going to be the underbody there. We're going to now tie in a mono loop to just keep it from fouling. And That's a very important factor on the beach. You don't want to have the snook of a lifetime pop up and then realize you're throwing a fouled fly. Certainly here on the East Coast, we get a lot of those big 15, 20, 25 pound fish up here on the West Coast as well. So the tail is in. Uh, love this uh, SF fiber. Steve, uh, I'm not gonna try and pronounce his last name, but I'm gonna start with the, uh, the white. Just get a relatively uh, modest amount. And I'm gonna try and just pull it and taper it with my finger so that it has a natural shape to it. I'm going to lay that right on top of the llama hair that I just put on there. And the llama is going to actually help keep the rest of the fly from fouling as well. It's going to give it a little bit of base, a little bit of support. And I just kind of run my scissors through just to blend the two materials together so they're not really separated and you can come back and just trim off any little tag ends that you see that you might not like but we'll finish all that up at the end anyway uh, next you know the pilchards and herring and other bait that I see on the beach that I fish a lot have a little bit of a yellow hint to them so I'm also going to pull out just a few strands of the SF fiber and what they call uh, wild olive and it's just a, a slight goldy olive texture but just a hint of yellow the live bait that I see swimming around up in that area has a little bit of yellow so basically we've got the the tail and then starting the the body transition a little bit there uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is is maybe a little different than most steps is I'm gonna build the body of the fly and give it a nice profile with some cross-cut rabbit and this is the reason why I wanted to tie mostly at the back of the hook there because I'm going to palmer some uh, rabbit if I tie it in correctly which that's kind of a strange move there tied it in backwards but nonetheless we'll fix that problem right quick and I'm going to basically tie in some white cross cut rabbit to give the belly of the fly a nice profile so just a couple of wraps of the cross cut rabbit Tie that right off at the head up here. There. And basically push it back just a little bit. Make sure I leave myself just enough space. But then the next thing I'm going to do is a little different. I'm going to come through and just separate this crosscut rabbit. I'm going to pull all the material down on the sides. That way there's nothing really on the top of the fly per se. It's all been pulled down. So I'm just going to go with my scissors and kind of part the hair like if you were parting your hair for a haircut or hair design of some style. So basically I got my body, I got my tail, and now I'm going to put in my top layer which is a camo color of the SF uh, synthetic material. It has flash already mixed in. This olive uh, gold light blue, it's called camo has a lot of good characteristics. The thing I like about this uh, Steve Farr material or Barbara or whatever it's called, SF nonetheless, is that it's uh, blended with different shades and it also has flash and it's a true synthetic so it's not going to absorb much water so it's easy to cast. And I'm just doing the same thing I was doing before. I'm just trying to pull these tips and 
give the body of the the material a nice transition to a little small tip there. I'm just going to lay that down for a reference, which looks good. And then basically, where I parted the hair, I'm going to do something a little different here. This might make a little bit of difference. I'm going to leave it a little long, and then I can come back and trim it to whatever shape I want here in a second. So basically I got the, the fly, once again I'm just going to push back on the material to kind of get it out of the way of the eye of the hook, and with some sharp scissors, I'm just going to trim off that excess there, so tie that off, it doesn't really matter what thread amount you have at the eye, we're going to cover this up with some nice 3D eyes and a little bit of epoxy here in a second, so nonetheless we got a, we got a basic shape and profile. We got that nice thicker belly that's going to be created from that cross cut rabbit that's going to help transition down and then I'm going to come up and just kind of angle my scissors. You never want to cut straight with synthetics. It gives it a very non-realistic uh, look. And that looks pretty good. I mean I'll basically glue it all up and come back and play with it some more but you can see how the rabbit's not going to foul it comes back just to about the shank of the hook and uh, a nice profile kind of translucent white bait looking type fly basically I'll take my 3D epoxy eyes I typically prefer red but I don't have any red so I'm going to use these silver and black going to stick those on where I want them and that's pretty much the fly at this point it's all personal preference some people I personally like epoxy I'm still stuck in the stone ages I guess a lot of people are using the uh, UV cure product either way at this point you would just want to come in and uh, and finish up the head with whatever product you prefer. I'm going to use some uh, UV Cure just because I have it sitting here. I'm trying to get more proficient at it. It doesn't always seem to work the way that I want, but nonetheless, I'm going to put just some over the whole head here. Just get a glob of it on there. Try not to get all my rabbit stuck in there. And then after I got the UV Cure product, which is in this particular case, the uh, they have a flexible, they have a finish. Right now I'm just using the normal hard series in that Tough Eyes, I believe it's called. I'm just going to come in and manipulate it just like I would epoxy. The only benefit I like to epoxy is at this point, once I got it where I want it, I just stick it in my spinning dryer and I'd be done but nonetheless we'll get this all on here and that's basically about it take my uh, UV light and I'm just gonna hit it for a couple of seconds get everything kind of solid get everything where I want it and it looks like that's about it for now so as you can see, get a nice little profile, nice shape, little bait fish imitation for crystal clear water on the beach, nice profile, clear translucency, golly I can't speak this morning, and uh, overall good profile as well, it's not going to foul, looks real in the water. So if you're looking for a good snook fly or any kind of shallow water, I don't put a weed guard. So if you're throwing this thing anywhere around weeds, you definitely want to put a weed guard on it. I typically don't just to not inhibit the hook set on those fish that are eating kind of with a little bit of finesse. But nonetheless, there you have it. Nice little beach snook fly for you. Good luck tying.